If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have an electron with an initial velocity of 5 times 10 to the 8th centimeters per second, and it's traveling through an electric field. Now, we've drawn the electric field pointing in the same direction as the motion of the electron, because it turns out that when you have negative charges, then the electric field is going to produce an electric force in the opposite direction of the field. So if the field is pointing to the right, then the electric force on the electron would be pointing to the left. So you can imagine an electric force pushing the electron to the left, and that's going to actually slow it down. And it does so until the final velocity is zero. Now we have to calculate the distance traveled for the electron to kind of come to rest. But to do that, we're going to need to look at the acceleration of the electron. Now we know that the acceleration of the electron would equal the net force acting on it divided by the mass of the electron. But in this circumstance, we have the electron bathed in an electric field. And the only force acting on it is that electric force. You probably have learned in this chapter that the electric force is equivalent to the charge of the electron multiplied by the electric field magnitude. So we're going to substitute for the electric force this expression Q times E. Now we'll go ahead and fill in the known values. The question gave us the electric field magnitude right here, and then the charge and mass of an electron are known values. And when we compute this, we get an acceleration magnitude of about 1.75 times 10 to the 14th. That's going to be in meters per second. But remember, the electric force in our picture was actually pointing to the left. So we're going to assign a negative to our acceleration because the acceleration would also be pointing to the left. Remember, the force and the acceleration point in the same direction. So that's our acceleration. We have an initial velocity and a final velocity, and we're looking for delta x. So let's write down the known values and one of our famous kinematics equations. So those are the three known values. We are looking for delta x. We might wish to rearrange the equation. We could subtract v initial squared from both sides and then divide by 2a. So that gives us the delta x value. Just be a little bit careful here because they're giving us the initial velocity in centimeters per second. We would want to do a unit conversion there. We all know that 100 centimeters is equivalent to one meter. So if we set that up, the centimeters cancel. We're going to get 5 times 10 to the power of 6th meters per second. So with that little conversion, we can go ahead and plug in the known values. And when we simplify that, we can see delta x is approximately 0.0714 meters. That is how far the electron will travel before coming to rest. Part B asks, how much time is that going to take? Well, we can do that pretty easily because we know the following equation from kinematics. We can actually rearrange that for time by subtracting V initial from both sides and then dividing by the acceleration. We have all the values on the left side, so let's go ahead and plug them in. And when we simplify that, we get about 2.85 times 10 to the minus 8th seconds. That's the correct answer to part B. Finally, part C, which asks us, if the region containing the electric field is eight millimeters long, which is too short for the electron to stop within it, what fraction of the electron's initial kinetic energy will be lost in that region? So let's try to come to grips with that question by just sketching a picture. Now the electron is still in the same electric field, so still experiences the same electric force, which means it still has the same acceleration, same initial velocity, but this time it's only traveling eight millimeters. It's not traveling the full distance that we calculated in part A. Now eight millimeters, if you divide that by a thousand, would be 0 0.008 meters. And we need to calculate the final velocity when the electron travels that eight millimeter distance. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to use another kinematics setup. Now we're trying to solve for this new final velocity because the electron is still going to be moving. So we take the square root of both sides of this equation, just like that. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values. And when you compute that, you should get a final velocity of approximately 4.71 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. So the electron has certainly slowed down. It's no longer traveling at the five times 10 to the sixth. It's only going about 4.71 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Now, because it has slowed down, it has lost some kinetic energy. And that's actually what the question is asking us to figure out is 
what percentage of its initial kinetic energy has it lost. Now, it might be helpful, therefore, to calculate the initial kinetic energy as well as the final kinetic energy. We can do both by doing one-half times the mass times the respective speeds squared. So we've set those calculations up, and we're going to go ahead and calculate those kinetic energies. And from here, we want to find out how much kinetic energy was lost as a percentage. So we need the change in kinetic energy divided by the initial kinetic energy and then multiply that by 100%. Now, to get the change in kinetic energy, we would simply subtract the initial and the final and then divide that by the initial kinetic energy and finally multiply that result by 100%. And when you perform that calculation, you should see that the percentage of kinetic energy lost was around 11% or maybe 11.3%. So that would be the correct answer for the percentage of the initial kinetic energy that was lost as the electron traveled eight millimeters.